Today's we've heard a lot about how the employees of the LCBO are faring, as well as concerns from small businesses. But there is another group that's starting to express some concern, and that's those who have developed a dependency on alcohol. YouTube. What's good, YouTube? We're back again. And we're back again. This guy's Rye Guy. This guy's Nino. And we are Studio B21. I'm back also again. sexy. Just a little. Be sexy. Just a tiniest bit. The tiniest yeah. bit. A smidgen. A smidgen of sex. A smidgen. A smidgen of sex a day keeps the keeps you know. the doctor away. Yeah, because I shower? I'm not sure. Well, uh, also because, you know, the doctor doesn't want me you trying to have sex with him a lot. Yeah, but the... Happy Pride, guys. Happy Anyways. <laughs> you want to see a magic trick? When I snap my fingers, you'll forget you were ever gay. Nah, it didn't work. Uh, ah, fuck. Oh, well, anyways. Uh, chaos. No, I know. Chaos in Ontario. Chaos across the board. Um, for the... For those unfamiliar with our lovely province of Ontario for which we live, a uh, history lesson. Unlike the US where it is sold in convenience stores, Walmart, next to the gun section, uh, your local Target, alcohol in Canada and Ontario, in Ontario is controlled by a monopoly government institution called the Liquor Control Board of Ontario, otherwise known as the LCBO. LCBO. You which slide, is put it up, put it, please put up the letters, uh, please. Like we're giving you the hints. Like, which is on, the man. which is the biggest buyer of alcohol in the world. By yes, the way. and yeah. they have they have been an institution in Ontario for what 50, 60 years since after yeah. the war. Yeah, since just since I believe no, just maybe yeah. a couple of decades after World War Two, maybe maybe yeah. like fifties or yeah. Sixties. This way we'll put up the facts over here somewhere. Bullet point. Bullet point. Yeah. Bullet point. But yeah. it is chaos, because for, for the first time in their union history, and this is an institution, once again, decades worth of a solid union, the LCBO has gone on strike. Which means, for Ontarians, they all locations are closed. No for alcohol next, for you. We, we essentially, hard alcohol, vodka, rum, tequila, any spirit specialty wine, champagne, um, yeah, you name it. There are other outlets. We have a beer store. We have a beer store, which is which obviously is, primarily beer. It's beer, and we have a wine shop. Uh, which is a corporation, not yeah. government mandated. Yeah, not government mandated. Which, which just sells wine. Yeah, but and it's honestly like 10 brands of wine. That's really it. Some coolers. Yeah. You know, the pair of cider but, there. The fact that the LCBO is on strike for the first time in its history has affected many Ontarians, including those with potential alcohol, with alcohol addictions. And we are going to react to a nice little news thing, and we're then you will get to see us discuss about how it affects our lives and the industry that we come from. Now, earlier today, we had a conversation with Stephen Morris, and he's a registered psychotherapist who deals specifically in the realm of those who are facing an addiction, as well as uh, providing help with other family members. And he said, although he's not yet seeing the impact among his clients, he's expecting that that will happen soon. Uh, what I'm expecting to see in the, in the near future is the um, the withdrawal from people that are alcohol dependent. And Morris adds he's concerned to see what appears to be depleting product on shelves of grocers or the beer store that until now had been the backup. I think that's going to be uh, really evident when you get into the more smaller communities. And he says as the impact of the diminished supply is increasingly felt by those facing addiction, family members and support networks will increasingly feel the strain as well telling us, like COVID, when provisions were made for exactly the circumstance, he'd like to see that happen again. And anything that we can do from a, a provincial level, from a, a local government a, a level, to be able to, to meet that need and make those provisions for people that, uh, that are looking to, uh, to get alcohol, um, I think it's, 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 got, it's a must. 
As for those trying to assess whether this is the time to reduce their dependence on alcohol, some suggestions on how to take those first steps. It's really important to connect with uh, the medical community to make sure it's something that's safe for you to do. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, clinics, withdrawal, withdrawal management centers, uh, even your uh, family doctor can support you with uh, the type of medical uh, uh, support that's needed to come off of the substance in a safe way. Now, one of the things that Morris also adds is that alcohol withdrawal is extremely dangerous and can even be deadly in some circumstances. Uh, now, at this point, there are no talks about making special provisions for those who have developed a dependency. Now, as the strike continues to drag on, apparently it looks like it's headed in that direction. That is something we are going to continue to watch out for. It's been two weeks at the time of recording since the yeah, strike, I believe. Give or take, yeah. So, things we've noticed, things that have happened to us. Um, where I live in Mississauga, um, I live right by a metro that has a aforementioned wine rack inside of it. And my partner has messaged me saying it's sold out. We went the other day and it was... We got in and then we looked behind us and there was a lineup of 15 people deep for literally... The thing about the wine rack where I am, it is the size of a walk-in closet. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of supply. And they their sales have skyrocketed, obviously. Oh, well, yeah. You know, if you're the only outlet left, so getting your alcohol. If your main competition goes on strike and people like the in, like the news segment said have addiction issues, if they can't get the hard liquor, they are going to try and switch to I guess what we could call the softer stuff of wine and beer. Yeah. You know, if the Timmy's goes out of business, if, if the Timmy's and the Starbucks go on strike and all you have left is the second cup, <laughs> The crappy coffee at the metro or whatever, then yeah, you, you'll, you'll bite the bullet. You'll you'll get that shit. But you know the the bodega could be the store Circle K coffee. I wish we had more of that. To be you honest know? with you, it's not that bad actually. It's not bad actually. <laughs> but, um, but, but that being said, it's like you'll you'll get a rise in sales. Yeah, but that also being said, this. For the restaurant industry that we come from Ooh. can potentially be a nail in a coffin for a lot of places keep in mind we're post covid and like to survive covid it's just amazing yeah for your, if you're but a restaurant especially if you are a bar primary specializing in cocktails if you cannot get deliveries from your main liquor supplier yeah it's like I don't know if you know this about the restaurant industry, but the majority of the profit is off the liquor side. It's off liquor. You know, where with the food, you look at 40% food cost, 30% food cost. Wine and, you know, wine and alcohol is 300%. 300%. Wine is closer to 2000 to 3000%. Yeah. Right? A $15 bottle of wine at the LCBO. Is a $45 bottle. Upwards of 200 Three hundred dollar bottle of wine, depending where you go, right? And the reason they could get away with this is people don't know wine. Yeah, right. People aren't familiar with the brandings, with the thing. You, people know vodka. They know Tito's. Yeah, they you know, know Smirnoff. They know, know Smirnoff, absolute. Smirnoff. You know, Captain Morgan's. They they're familiar with, you know, the harder liquors. There's no, you know. There, there's no liquor sommelier. Yeah, that's the thing, right? And you could get wine for very cheap. You could get wine very expensive and did not guarantee it to be good or bad. Yeah. Price is not indication of quality with wine. You have to understand that. And the fact that once you understand that, you could price wine any way you want it. And restaurants take advantage of that a lot because like if the average person doesn't know if people in the industry even not sure then they could take advantage of that yeah. to the consumer and that's why people look at a wine menu and unless you're well versed and you keep up every single week 
what's what's the what's the trick that we've heard when looking at a wine menu? You order the second most cheapest bottle. <laughs> the second cheapest bottle of wine. Because on the first the menu. cheapest is the cooking wine they use. Yeah, you know, that's that's the one they give to the kitchen to cook with. And the second cheapest bottle will be essentially your sixteen, thirteen dollar bottle at the yeah. at the LCBO. Yeah. And you'll probably get it for twenty five dollars. Twenty five to fifty bucks a bottle. Yeah. Which is which is a great because you're only paying the three hundred percent markup. The thirteen dollar five ounce pour. It's well, not even a whole bottle, it's a five ounce pour. That's it. And it's only a twelve ounce bottle of wine. Yeah, remember that. And the fact that people don't know and the people it's like you want to get wine with your dinner and it's just ingrained in North American culture and but now, European culture. Now the fact that it's more of the cocktails. So we've gotten a little off topic, sorry. Um, the LCBO is hard liquor. How this can affect... We also sell wine. That's true, they do, we sorry. Also, they sell the bigger variety of wine, right? They sell the main supplier of wine to the restaurants yeah. is the LCBO. Yeah. And just the fact that soon, if this strike goes on all summer, um, it's going to the supply is going to dry up. Yes, unless there's changes in laws, which is which only else helps the government. The strike only helps the government. Yeah, with this like with the full coordination and closing the science center and. I yeah, would that's... also I would also like to point out that first of all, like we shouldn't expect anything from uh, Doug Ford. Like that man, if you know his family history, you know his brother Rob, who was the mayor of Toronto. Mm -hmm. What was his claim to fame, Nino? People like to smoke crack with the. He liked to smoke the crack. Smoke the crack. Uh, people don't know he was one of the bigger drug dealers in Canada, in yeah. Toronto. Yeah. You know him and his family. No, uh, allegedly. Allegedly. Allegedly, I uh, rumors. Uh, we're not saying anything about that. This, past past rumors, apparently. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure. It's like I didn't say shit. <laughs> but yeah, who said this? That? I want to say that this piece of shit human being within a day of the LCBO going on strike posts a vi posts a little informative video with an app stating every other secondary location you can buy wine and beer when this guy this guy cares more about wine and beer and his than, corporate partners and his corporate partners than find than having Canadians know where the closest doctor is to them a good chunk of new Canadians don't know where they can go to register for a walk-in hospital, a walk-in clinic, or a family doctor. And people have been hounding on Doug Ford to make this more accessible. This guy would rather see, like, the alcohol and wine people make money than Canadians actually live. Fuck Doug Ford. Fuck Doug Ford. Fuck you for clicking the science center, right? You, you got people who are willing to pay for it. Yeah. Private citizens. Private Ontarians. And don't give me know? the bullshit about, oh, it's structurally unstable. You know, it's like... Yeah, you want to turn fucking Ontario Place into a, into a private casino. I, I got a couple of friends who have to close the restaurants down lately. Shout out to you, Chef Bad, love you. Mm -hmm. But, uh... It, it restaurant industry is hard enough as is, right? And taking away your ability to make money on one of the main main money makers in the restaurant the sources of income, yeah. And you know, not saying that you have to have alcohol to have a good time, but it's it's part and parcel of going. It's out. what we've been conditioned for. Yeah. Think and of think of nightclubs as well in Toronto. Nightclubs have taken a huge hit. Night nightclubs have already taken a huge hit from COVID itself. People were people were balling out on their serb money in the illegal clubs during COVID. However, with inflation 
and everything that has happened in the years past. What is who the who in their right mind when you can't afford rent is going to go out to a club and buy a thousand dollar bottle of Smirnoff? Sometimes you just want to go out dancing, but and that's the club's main money maker. Like, you think they're gonna pay their rent off a twenty off a thirty dollar door fee? No, that's not keeping the lights on. It's not keeping the lights on. So if this continues, a lot of Toronto nightlife is gonna die. King Street could die essentially. Oh yeah, the whole that whole downtown core there. It's like that's all restaurant, man. It's pure restaurants and nightclubs. Club. Nightclubs. It's yeah. Pure debauchery, but I love it. Yeah. Shout out was a fair. I love that restaurant on King Street. It's Ooh. one of the best that I've ever been to. Well, oh, try there. Try the squid ink pasta, Requen. Beautiful. Yeah. Not sponsored, by the way. Not sponsored. It's genuine love for that restaurant. Does they fair to sponsor us? <laughs> See, we'll shout out here. You know, yeah. at least a free bottle of wine, man. Eh? Uh, free burgundy from uh, the France region. Nice. Oh, good times. But, yeah, guys, try to keep you updated with this and i do support the workers i have friends from the 100 support the workers because like you might not understand this but i have people working there for like five six eight years we're still part-time they're the permanent full-time is a part-time is a gold position right they, they, they don't have the part-time the full-time benefits get the full-time hours the 35 hours a week you know, but they're still considered part time, and like, but they're not guaranteed those shifts of a full time, exactly. and like, and this is the way they have to live because like, it's a great job. And think about it, if they are on strike right now, at most, they are getting paid three hundred dollars a week. Yeah, that's it for being in the picket line, and that's just from speculation, from what I know, but. In this economy, that you can't pay rent with that. Yeah, buddy, you, could you can't buy groceries with that. Them, yeah, buddy. So I offer my thoughts and prayers that this can be resolved as quickly as possible with favorableness for the LCBO. Yeah, stay strong, workers. Stay strong, please. Like you have our support yeah. from the restaurant industry. You have our support. Yes. You know, that being said, we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, fuck Doug Ford. Have a great day, guys. Well, be kind to you. Be kind to others.